long as you stay focused stay on that. Stay focused. That's the key word, focus. Thank you so much, Noah. Awesome yeah. interview. I'm going to shake your hand well, again. You. You're going to be a rich man one day. <laughs> Don't forget about the sixth grade I teacher, won't. okay? <laughs> Throw me a little something. So. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for watching. Again, congratulations to all the students that graduated in the class of 2015 here in Thomasville City Schools and Thomas County Schools and surrounding areas. I know you might. You know, you might not graduate top of your class, but you did graduate, and that is an honor. So a moment of inspiration says congratulations. Listen, we understand that as he grew up, Noah Harris, he became wiser. You know, as you grow up, you put away childish things, and he did just that, and he reached the top. So the underdog became the top dog. Well, top yellow jacket. We'll keep it like that. So it takes wisdom to get to where you need to be. And our next guests are the women of wisdom, and they're going to help you use wisdom when it comes to your marriage. Thanks for watching A Moment of Inspiration. Here's next. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Willette Wilkerson. And I'm Rhoda Whitfield. And we are the Women of Wisdom. We are so glad to be back with you again to do this telecast. We've been gone for a minute, but we have been doing other things. So today we are excited to be with you and to bring you um, a topic today that we think is going to be extremely exciting. We're talking about on-the-job training, OJT. Does anyone know anything about OJT, on-the-job training? And I guess you might be asking yourself, well, what does OJT have to do with marriage? Well, you know, uh, when we think about on-the-job training, we think about um, going into a job with your experience, your, your background knowledge, um, your education and you take all of that to a job and they are going to take you through a training and a lot of jobs will pay you while you are training on the job but we want you to know that there is not a prerequisite there is not a living arrangement that will give you on the job training for marriage amen living together um well, that what I want the, our listeners to understand is that even though you choose to live together, mm -hmm. that does not set you up to get a feel of what marriage is all about. And, you know, when you look at living together, you have two different couples. Mm -hmm. You have the couple that they're living together for convenient purposes. Mm -hmm. um, Just tired of getting up going to my own yeah, house. Yeah, they don't want to go to their own mm -hmm. house. They want to just stay the night. They mm -hmm. want to just have everything conveniently available to them. They split the rent. They split the utilities. Okay. This is my money. That's your money. That's your car note, my car note. And so basically, they're in a, uh, a situation where if they get tired, they can just up and leave. Like a roommate situation. Right. It's a roommate mm -hmm. situation with benefits. Mm -hmm. okay. But then there's another couple. Okay. And there's that couple is a couple, they are moving in the right direction together. And they choose to live together, but they are focusing on the fact that we're going to go in the godly way. Um, when they go into a living arrangement, they are looking at each other as this is my future wife, mm -hmm. this is my future husband. Okay. And they're trying to educate themselves so that they can be that godly woman, that godly man. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference in those two uh, situations. But I think in both situations, we don't want either couple to um, allow living together to give them a misread of marriage because it's really not an on-the-job training for marriage. And the reason I say that is because your living conditions, um, living together without marriage, you're really operating under um, the plan of Satan. And so he's not going to throw the attacks exactly. to you exactly. as he would um, a couple that has come into an agreement with God to live together and marriage. And see, and they don't understand that. The devil has no concern. You are living exactly like he wants you to mm -hmm, live. Mm -hmm. Now, when you opt and you choose to go before God, family, and friends, and exchange your vows and go into a covenant with God, now the enemy is going to attack. Mm -hmm. And here is the point that is very important to get educated. 
don't go into a marriage feeling because there's no manual. That's right. There's no manual that says do it this particular like way. Like you would get on the right. on-the-job training. Now, mm -hmm. this is on-the-job training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now you were living together and y'all were getting along just fine. But we have to now move from this is my money, mm -hmm. your money, mm -hmm. here's my half of the rent. I got my half. Okay. Let's pay our rent. Okay. No, 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 no. It's now our money. And my aunt has an old saying, it's Iva money. It's Iva money. It's Iva money. Right. So if I'm broke, you broke. Okay. So you got money, I got money. Right. So you're saying we should be moving into oneness. Into oneness. Oneness. And we can't go into oneness until we are uh, God ordains our marriage. Absolutely. And we go into a covenant. Because that's when oneness is developed. Absolutely. He expects us to be one. See, when we're living together, we are two imperfect people just living together. Now, we get married, we're still two imperfect people. But we are moving into, into a perfect, perfect union. union. Absolutely, absolutely. And that is how you receive the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. So to put it in, in plain terms where they might understand, it's like having insurance. You know, it's like, you know, if you're living together, just shacking together, you kind of got the PIP. But mm -hmm. if you are married, you got full coverage. That does not mean you're not going to have trouble, but that means your plan is going to cover you. That's right. You're going to be covered. So when the enemy come against you, God got a way of escape. He has already planned a way of escape for you, and he already has your back. He already has it worked out. The battle is not yours. But when you're living as individuals and you're not in that covenant relationship with God, then you got to just struggle through every situation, every circumstance, not knowing how you're going to come out. I, you know, I go through hard times, but I don't worry about how I'm going to get through to the other side because I know God got me and my husband. Right. And at this point, you know, um, with the time that both of us have been married, we have been through enough to know God has has shown himself mighty and great. Mm -hmm. And he's shown us he has the ability to bring us through. Yeah. And so all we know, all we have to do is just be still and wait. Now, if he brings us to it, he's going to take us through it. Absolutely. But when you look at a newlywed couple, mm -hmm. you know, they want everything in their life is microwave. They want everything to be yes, quick, quick and, and, and in a hurry. Work. Yes, yes. And marriage is like making some homemade soup. It's got to simmer. Okay. And you got to throw a whole lot in it. Uh, a whole lot of ingredients. A whole lot got to go in it. And some ingredients you might say, mm, I don't like that flavor. And the next time you make it, you might omit it. But it's got to simmer to get the flavor Through it. that you want to mm -hmm. savor. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Okay. So with that being said, I feel that uh, newlywed couples need to line themselves up with couples that have demonstrated marital wisdom. Right. You know, Rhoda, when we first started talking about this on-the-job training and how it relates to marriage, you and I both was trying to think of couples that did not go this route, that did not live together prior to marriage, and we couldn't think of anyone, not including one. ourselves in some form of shacking. Right. So um, it seems to be the way of work. But we, we just want to help educate people to understand how to get the full blessings that God have for your life on your life. Because the Word of God says in Deuteronomy 28 that if we diligently seek God's voice, mm -hmm. then He will not only come bring us blessings, blessings won't just come on us, they will overtake us. Mm -hmm. And I want the kind of blessings that's just going to overtake me. Okay. So I want them on the shelf yes, blessings, the, the ones, ones that you can just lift up and bring yes, down. Yes, yes. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can help someone because we didn't have a manual. No one else has a manual for marriage. And so I'm hoping that we can just help someone in understanding that you don't have to get a false reading of this is what it's going to be like when we get married. Let's just live together. No. That is not the on-the-job training that you need for marriage. 
is not going to properly prepare you for marriage. And you know something? I think they also, our listening audience, need to understand this. They, they may feel that living together is 24-7, but shacking comes in other forms. Yes, let's talk about okay. that. Okay. Let's talk about that. Shacking can be that um, you just don't feel like getting up going home tonight. Mm -hmm. You spend the night. It's convenient. You're there. Mm -hmm. He's there. And you don't get up and you go. If you do that so many times out of the week, so many times out of the month, that's equivalent to shacking. All right. Now, here's the other benefit of that one that they think they have. I don't have to share your rent. Hello, somebody. I'm just spending, I'm just spending I'm the just night. I'm just taking advantage of right. the situation. I'm just filling up some free air. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're absolutely right. And so that's a selfish way of looking at it. So you need to even question that person's motive. And do you want to be connected to that person that's right. um, for life? One thing they need to remember is everything we do in life has to have a why. Exactly. And when you live with someone, there needs to be a why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. what, am I, what am I going to achieve? Now you have... Like I said earlier, you have two couples. Right. You have couple number one, they live together, and it's for convenient purposes. Okay. And if they don't like it, next week, they, they may be living with someone else. Right. Couple number two, they have a why. Mm -hmm. They said from the onset that this is going to be my wife, this mm -hmm. is going to be my husband. Mm -hmm. They've already identified their spouse. Walking with a common goal. Right. Okay. They're going, they know in five years they want to be married, they want to have children, they want um, to be financially set, they want a new home. Mm -hmm. Go back to couple number one. They you, just want to be together. That's all. I they just, want everything at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. So they want to practice marriage. But they, they want don't. The, they want the benefits of being married, but they don't want the commitment of being married. They don't want the commitment. Okay, so Ro, let me see if you can help me. Let's say that I am... Um, now engaged, I live with my um, fiance. We want the blessings of God upon our life, um, and we are going to get married. I know that he's going to be my husband, and um, we have started making plans on how to save money together. What advice would you give me um, for moving into that oneness that you talked about earlier? I still would say that that person needs to be educated. You know, when I got married, there was not a lot offered for a married couple. Okay. There was really not even any premarital counseling. You're right. So um, these are things, counseling, getting premarital counseling, okay. um, getting involved in your church couples ministry, going to couples retreats, just putting yourself in an environment that is dealing strictly with couples. It makes no sense if you're saying you're engaged mm -hmm. for you and your fiance to still be going to singles ministry. Oh, okay. So I don't have to actually wait till I'm married to start educating myself about no, marriage. No. Okay. All right. I can Get see books, where that will help read, me. Read, educate yourself. Okay. I can see where that will help me. And hopefully it will help you too. So um, what we are basically saying is that you want to take on marriage in the way that God planned for you to take on marriage. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Marriage is not for everyone, but marriage is a good thing for everyone that takes it on because marriage was ordained by God. So if he ordained it, he blessed it. And that's what you want over your life. Okay. Well, we sure hope we help someone today. And um, the next time we record, we're going to have some guests in the studio with us uh, that are newlyweds and maybe they can give you their perspective and give you a better understanding of what we're talking about regarding on the job training. So for now we want to say keep, keep it, it tight, tight and, and right. keep it right. Have a good day. Thanks again for watching another edition of A Moment of Inspiration. I hope you were inspired, empowered, and motivated today. Listen, if you have a story to share with us, please do so. Email me at blessings12 at yahoo.com. B-L-E-S-S-I-N-G-S 12 at yahoo.com. Thanks so much. See you next time.